speaking to you on behalf of Larbert Baptist Church and this is a thought for the day for Monday the 8th of November and to tell you frankly this has been a bit of a up and down sort of week in my preparing for this thought for the day. I did quite a bit of work on one matter and as I thought about it I thought well you know there's something that I need to deal with before that. So I set all those notes aside and I, I worked on uh, this other matter that needed to be addressed and I was dealing with this question why do people not listen to Jesus Christ you know the Sermon on the Mount ends with the Saviour saying that there are two categories of people. There are people who hear his words and do them. And there are people who hear his words and do not. Why not? I thought about that. I, I, I wanted to get to grips with it. Why is it people do not listen or do not respond to and obey the words of Christ? And I drew up, well, four reasons to explain why this is so. And I, I worked at it and I I dealt with it and I, I, I wrote this and I wrote that and thought about it. These four reasons why people don't respond to Jesus Christ. And I thought there's something missing here. All these explanations for why people don't respond to Jesus Christ they're all doctrinal. They're all somehow reasoned through, thought through explanations for why people don't respond to Jesus Christ. And then it occurred to me, as a matter of fact, most people don't respond to Jesus Christ because they never give him a thought. Not a thought. It doesn't occur to them. They don't mind hearing about Jesus Christ, but it never occurs to them. I mean, it, it doesn't occur to them. To respond or to obey or to live lives that are shaped by his word. There's a, a spontaneous absence of response. It's not thought through, it, it's not reasoned, it's not anything to do with doctrine. It's just that it's never actually occurred to people and I thought well really that's the heart of the matter there are little congregations here there and everywhere and they're composed of people who really are taking very seriously the words of Jesus Christ but there are masses and masses and masses of people who never give one passing thought to the words of Jesus Christ. 
the whole spontaneity of their life is just implicit rejection of the authority of Christ. And I thought, well, really, that's the matter that's got to be dealt with. If people are beginning to think, well, well, there's some hope. But if they're not even beginning to think, what are we to do? We read these words in the second epistle of Peter. Scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation and i feel that what peter writes there is the very subject that I need to address and this is what what I call it the onward sweep of the status quo the ongoing of life as it is whether the preachers or not preachers whether it's sunshine or rain, well, life goes on. It is the onward sweep of the status quo. And people are just getting on with life. Going to bed, getting up, morning, evening, summer, winter, just Life goes on, the onward sweep of the status quo. We read in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5 these words. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. What a state the world must have been in. There was one man who was living at that time. There are two men mentioned in the Bible as walking with God. And this man, who was living at that time, was the second of them. His name was Noah. And God said to Noah, I am going to destroy this generation. The depth of their depravity has gone beyond continuation. They will be destroyed. Therefore, you must build an ark for the saving of your house. Unless I'm misunderstanding Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 it took Noah a hundred and twenty years to build the ark and all that time he was a preacher of righteousness. That's how it's described. 
he was declaring to men and women at that time the word of God. He was a preacher of righteousness. And if I'm right about that statistic of 120 years, it might be wondered, well, what was the result of 120 years of preaching righteousness? The scripture doesn't leave us in any doubt. There was not one person outside Noah's own family who responded. Not one. Not one. No one took Noah seriously. It isn't that they ignored him. I mean, you couldn't ignore what Noah was doing. I mean, there in the field, this colossal ark was being built. So you couldn't ignore what he was doing. But neither did they take him seriously. So if they didn't take him seriously, I suppose they took him hilariously. And they were probably terribly dismissive about him. He's a nice enough chap in his way, but he's got this religious kink. He's got some crazy idea about a flood. <laughs> it's, too, it's too ridiculous for words. That's the onward sweep of the status quo. Life is going on. And they didn't take Noah seriously. So if they didn't take him seriously, but, well, made a sort of joke of him, they had to take notice. Because all the time, there in the field, that thing was taking shape. 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high. I mean, it was a, a national phenomenon. And people would think, what's that? And increasingly, what's that? That huge, great thing there in the field. I can imagine that if they didn't take Noah seriously and they couldn't stop him from going on with this crazy venture, well, they'd make it a tourist attraction, don't you think? They would think, well, we can't stop this, this venture. So we'll make the most of it. I can imagine an entrepreneurial initiative being taken, a shop being opened near the building site, old Noah's 
knick knack booting boutique it might be called and all sorts of costume jewellery to be bought there when people came to see what was going on dingle dangle earrings with sweet little replicas of Noah's boat and deluxe necklaces in beautiful boxes with a model of Noah's boat in lapis lazuli. I can imagine somebody saying to the owner of the boutique, you know, I called on old Noah the other day and he, and he took me on a guided tour of that thing. He took me inside. Well, don't laugh, but inside he's building stalls for animals. Oh, really? Oh, the owner of the boutique would say. Well, that gives me an idea. I'll make little models of Noah's boat and little models of animals that you can pop inside. Oh, would I keep the kiddie winkies spellbound? Nobody's ever thought of that. That's the onward sweep of the status quo. I can imagine that other initiatives would be taken. An enterprising venture with regard to food. After all, eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, that is what the people really did take seriously. And so I can imagine an eating place near the building site entitled Old Noah's Landlocked Prow and Stern Restaurant. At the front of wherever it was, I imagine, the prow, there'd be a, a snack bar. I mean, you could pop in there for your elevenses before you went on a guided tour of the Noah's madcap thing in the field there. But at the back and the stern, there was the main eating area, table service. Oh, magnificent menu. People came from far and wide to old Noah's landlocked prow and stern restaurant. And um, if you wanted to book a wedding reception, there was something there called the captain's table, very popular, booking months ahead to have a wedding reception at the captain's table in old Noah's landlocked prow and stern restaurant. The onward sweep of the status quo not taking what he was saying and doing seriously until the day Noah entered the ark. Where's old Noah? I saw him five minutes ago. Where is he? Noah had entered the ark. And they did not know 
until the flood came and took them all away. So also said Jesus Christ, will the coming of the Son of Man be? It is time we took what Jesus Christ said seriously. Seriously. We must build our lives upon the rock of his word. Joshua, at the end of his life, said, You know, in all your hearts and in all your souls, that not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All have come to pass. Not one word of them has failed. Yes. Uh, but you must know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing will fail of all the solemn things which the Lord your God has spoken concerning you all will come to pass not one word of them will fail it's very solemn very serious and it's this onward sweep of the status quo that must be challenged and stopped. We must listen to what God has said to us in the person of his son. As God said to the prophet Malachi, I am the Lord. I do not change. Listen to Jesus Christ. <laughs>